Hey guys, Boris Salzberg. Welcome to the Weekly Technicals for Euro Dollar, Dollar Yen, Pound Dollar for October 3rd through 7th. Very, very important week for currencies this week, especially for the dollar because we have a slew of data coming out, um, not just in the U.S., um, in Australia and in, in um, the U.K. as well, but it's going to be U.S. data that I think is going to be the most formative and the most important for the, uh, for the currency market simply because of this. The last communique that we had from Janet Yellen, essentially said that as long as labor data remains on pace, as long as we're doing 150,000, certainly 200,000 jobs for the rest of the year, the prospect of a rate hike is almost a certainty. And that is going to raise interest rate expectations in the U.S. substantially if they can confirm with the data that's coming out this week with the non-farm payrolls that U.S. economy is pretty much on pace to, um, to move towards more normalization. This week also, we had essentially an immolation of Trump. He basically, I think, um, and of course, never say never. This is an incredibly, incredibly volatile and unusual campaign. But it appears that the risk of a Trump presidency, which was a big risk aversion risk hanging all over the market, may be starting to recede as well. But it, again, it's early. That's it, 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 nothing, nothing is certain about that. But the fact that you have this sort of a combination of a more conventional candidate along with um, relatively uh, robust U.S. data should be extraordinarily dollar bullish as we go forward, as long as we can have the confirmation on the economic front um, that we're already starting to see on the political front. So this this makes this week, in many ways, seven a week for the dollar, as long as we can get the data support. If we don't get data support, the picture remains quite murky, um, and dollar could be in for a little bit of a um, uh, for a dump. In fact. Um, it's not at all impossible to see us come back down towards the 100 level in the, in the dollar yen on a major disappointment in U.S. data. But assuming that we're sort of chugging along at a relatively decent, robust pace, and there's nothing in the U.S. Uh, indicators near term that suggests that there is really a, um, a major decline in demand, um, it really opens up the, the, the much greater prospect of a pro-dollar, longer-term secular move, and therefore positions um, all of the majors uh, to the downside against the dollar as we go forward. So very, very important week after lots and lots of inactivity and lots of waiting around. This is going to be the um, the time with what we call in, in the U.S. the rubber hits the road where it's time to put up or shut up. Um, and it's going to be a very, very interesting week for those of you who are trading the majors. Let's take a look at the, look at, uh, look at the uh, levels here. The levels essentially have literally not changed since last week. That's what's so fascinating. We've been in such a dead, low volatility environment that ultimately the really big levels still remain in place. As a matter of fact, 1150 is the critical level in the euro. 1350 to the upside is, is uh, going to be markedly different. I mean, in other words, if we take out 1350 to the upside, it would completely change the whole dynamics of the dollar trade and make the dollar much more bearish than it, than it currently is. And with dollar yen, the same kind of a thing. Uh, we've held off this week the runs towards the 100 twice. It was actually a very bullish development if you believe that um, uh, that, that the bears have had their day, that, that, that 100 has held support, and now we're going to start to squeeze to the upside. 103 would really put us into a much stronger, longer-term uh, secular uptrend than a dollar and dollar yen. And pound dollar has its own interesting story this week. So the latest news story that hit the wires from Reuters actually right over the weekend, very, very timely for all of us, is that Theresa May is now uh, suggesting that March – very, very soon. March may be the um, trigger point for Article 50. If that's true um, and compounded by the fact that if UK data this week, we have manufacturing, we have services, we have a lot of uh, PMI data coming up. If the UK data shows further deterioration, um, the prospect of cable hitting post-Brexit lows grows exponentially. To me, the most interesting trade here is if we get bad data out of the UK along with uh, sort of subtle confirmations that that the Brexit story is coming. The pressure on cable, I think, is actually going to accelerate to the downside, and we're going to be watching this 128 very, very carefully as the low that gets broken for the uh, post-Brexit lows. So lots of interesting stories aside from the dollar, especially in the pound this week, and we're going to watch them all. Let's take a look at the charts here and just see how everything um, sets up. So your dollar still staying in that incredibly tight range. Look at this range. I mean, you, you have to just respect um, the fact that, that volatility has been just dead. This is effectively, for all intents and purposes, a 100-point range. A 100-point range 
for the whole month of September. Remember, there are days, or certainly the Brexit day, but there are plenty of days where the euro will do 150 in a day. So the fact that the euro has managed to stay in a 100-point range effectively for a month is incredibly indicative of just how low volatility environment we've been in. And the interesting thing about this low volatility environment, of course, is that it's always mean reverting. That means that whenever we have low volatility, it means we're going to have high volatility coming soon. Now, the technical look in the euro just screams the perfect what we call volatility squeeze, where you have a series of lower highs, series of higher lows, and it's got to resolve one way or the other. If you're looking at the very near term, at the very near term, this was a bullish development here on Friday. But frankly, this was a development that was that was based upon uh, fears of Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank was rumored to be um, in serious financial trouble. Um, the 15 billion or 14 billion punishment uh, punishment penalty from the DOJ was hanging over it like the sword of Damocles. And the fact that uh, latest rumors were that they were getting, able to, to negotiate the penalty down to four and a half billion was viewed as very positive. And that's what really created this, this, this nice strong buy-up candle on Friday. Um, Technically, technically, the euro actually looks much stronger to the upside than it does to, does to the downside. And that's actually um, a word of caution to those who are just sort of unrepentant dollar bulls that as far as charts go right now, there's little to suggest that the dollar is really um, on the verge of a big breakout to the upside. It's quite the opposite. Dollar could be in for a trip uh, to the downside. That would you know, certainly suggest that we would have negative data um, this weekend, surprise to the downside. Um, I find that hard to believe. I think this is, you know, technically this 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 is showing bullishness. But the background story here is just simply a one-day wonder on the euro side. Still, you need to respect, I think, the technicals here and not get too carried away with the with the short dollar story. Especially, especially if we start, you know, pushing out around the 1250 level and not really start to come back down, um, even in light of positive US data as the week develops. If we if we can't get any momentum to the downside on the dollar, that's a very troubling sign. That means the market is looking at something else that, that we're all missing and therefore need to really pay attention to um, to not trying to get dollar, dollar long at this point. Uh, but uh, if we start to, if we break this 1150 hard to the downside, whichever way, that's certainly gonna create a much cleaner technical signal that uh, the Euro is finally starting to give way, and it's probably going to target us down to 109.50 on a longer-term basis. That would suggest essentially a very, very bullish dollar story, interest rate differentials going our way, and the Euro finally, finally starting to sink under the weight of um, differential monetary policy. So let's get rid of these uh, lines. Let's take a look at the Yen. Yen um, also doesn't look doesn't really give you this incredible boat of confidence to the upside right i mean we put we you know we, we we did hold the 100 that is i think the most bullish thing you can say about the end so we held the 100 we do have a series of higher lows but we can't seem to penetrate 102 with any degree of uh confidence the fact that we get rejected all the time at these levels um is not something that that makes you uh just want to jump out and buy dollar yen with both uh, uh both eyes open or both hands open still the fact that we may be able to, to hold around these levels and, and the critical near-term level is going to be the 101 uh, is going to give us, I think, modest degree of confidence that the ultimate trend here is inching to the upside. It may very well be until Friday, until the, the final most important data set that we have comes out, that we're going to get a definitive um, idea of how the markets want to move. Uh, but for now, they just seem to be very, very skeptical of the dollar rally and um, very reticent of it. The one thing that is not reticent, the one thing that's, I think, relatively clear is just how weak table is. Because despite the fact that you see the euro and uh, the yen uh, showing some pretty good resilience against the dollar, the pound really can't even get up above the 130. So 130.50 still remains a pretty serious uh, resist level. And a break of this 29 that opens up the run towards the 28 really creates, essentially, if you think about this on a longer term basis, what's interesting about this is that this is, this is a standard kind of um, longer term currency uh, trend development story on a, on a big, bigger scale. So we have the shock of Brexit. Then we have this this several month of consolidation as the markets try to figure out, hey, is this story real? Is this unreal? Is the impact real? Is it unreal? And my uh, contention is that the market, if uh, we get this this double whammy combination of, of bad economic data out of UK as, as businesses pull in their horns and uh, a very 
uh, confident prediction from the UK government that they're going to actually go through with this earlier rather than later. The move now, once it breaks the uh, the lows of post Brexit, opens us up towards a 125 move. In to me, this is a if we start breaking the lows here, this is a very clear, strong signal. The cable has much more selling to do as the macroeconomic uh, story out of the UK is going to get worse and worse and worse. So very interesting, very uh, fascinating look. And I think in some ways, perhaps even a more interesting story in the dollar story because it's, it's much cleaner and clearer as far as the technicals and the fundamental story behind it. Wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. Borscht Lossberg, over and out.